Hello and welcome to the channel. This morning I was surprised by an AliExpress delivery. The delivery in itself wasn't a surprise, but the fact that I ordered this watch less than a week ago definitely was. I've been waiting for some time to get this steel die for review. Now it's finally here, so let's take a look. In this unboxing review, I will cover the price, key dimensions and specifications of this watch. Also, as usual, I will share my first impressions. This is my first experience with steel dive soak. I will be taking this one step at a time, so to speak, managing my expectations. I'm going for a day trip to the Seashore in the next few days. Yes, we do have Seashore here in UK. There will be no diving, but I might get this watch wet. And hopefully, I will take some footage for the upcoming full review video and maybe even post some pictures on my new Instagram account, so follow us if you want to see them firsthand. First, the price. I paid around 120 US dollars for this watch on AliExpress during the end of summer sale. It is now available for a bit higher price of around 130 dollars. With the seller discounts and coupons applied, you can knock off three or maybe five dollars. You can further reduce the price if you sign up as a new user. This price is still, of course, about 10 times less than the price of the Seiko SPB151, which is the same as this watch, a homage to the Seiko 6105, also known as Captain Willard, a character who wore this watch in the movie Apocalypse Now, portrayed by Martin Sheen. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, it was shipped to UK lightning fast, as a matter of fact, it looked like it was shipped from within UK, even though there was no option available during the purchase. Please let me know if this was just my luck, which doesn't happen very often and maybe I should celebrate this day, or your steel dive shipments were quick as well. Please let us know in the comments. Quite nice, robust and probably familiar box if you watched any other steel dive unboxings. A warranty card, well-packaged watch with a tag, no user manual, well, don't really need one. This is Seiko NH35. Okay, dimensions. Measured across the case, 3 to 9 o'clock, it is just under 44 millimeters. Bezel diameter is 41.5 millimeters. Case height is 14 millimeters. We have 20 millimeter lugs and lug tip to lug tip is about 47 millimeters which allows this big in appearance watch to sit really well, even on under 6.5 inch wrists. Bracelet slightly tapers down the clasp down to about 18 mm, and the clasp is just under 20 mm wide. The bracelet at full length should cover up to 8.25 inch wrist, which is about 21 cm. On a fully supplied stainless steel bracelet, it weighs 190 grams, so it is a substantial piece. I expect it to drop 15 or so grams after I adjust it to my about 7 inch wrist and I definitely expect it to be even lighter after I put it on a rubber strap which I ordered for this watch. I will share the updates in my full upcoming video review. I like the dial on this watch. At the first glance everything seems to align and I haven't picked up any QC issues. The dial is very much in line with the Seiko 6105 dial. Applied indices, nicely framed date window. The same set of hands as on Captain Willard original Seiko watch. I know that Steel Dive logo is a bit polarizing. I actually like it. There is an option to buy a sterile version in case if this logo is not your cup of tea. Please let us know in the comments what do you think about the logo. Does this remind you of Angry Ninja? Which may not necessarily be a bad thing. Well, yes, please let us know. And, of course, this is a steel dive, so plenty of loom. While we're talking about the dial, we might as well check the crystal. We have a nice and flat sapphire crystal here with slightly beveled edges. I can confirm the watch has a sapphire crystal, so all is good. There is a generous number of anti-reflective undercoating layers on the crystal, which is also good. You can see a slight blue hue. We have ceramic insert bezel with loomed chaptering. The bezel is unidirectional and has 120 clicks. The bezel action is ok, easy to grip, good level of resistance and quite satisfying gratuity sound and feel to it. There is a slight backplay, but nothing major. 
Moving on to the case, stainless steel construction, nice brushing and polishing, no sharp edges on the case, generally good finishing at this price point. Screw down crown with a logo and screw down back case. We have declared 200 meters of water resistance, so this is a real diver. I might have more to report for the full review in a week or so, but so far the first impression is quite good. I will get into more details on movement performance in the upcoming full review, but for now I can say that thanks to the NH35 movement the crown action is smooth, the winding and general crown operation is quite reassuring. I only had this watch in my possession for a few hours now, so I cannot report on accuracy. I will include a time graph report in the full review. Bracelet. Well, this is a bit strange, because I did expect a real rubbish bracelet, to be honest. However, I think I will keep this bracelet on. Well, at least for now. So, okay, the brushing on the end links and on the case locks is not in line, and slightly different. However, it is quite difficult to achieve with such a case shape. The lugs are almost flush to the case, and again, with such a case shape, it is not that straightforward either. Further, we have solid end links, nice and chunky links with brush top and polished flanks. Bracelet may be a bit looser than I would like, but not particularly a deal breaker for me. And it is pins, not screws, which is also okay. Of course, now we get to the clasp, and it is functional, but pretty basic, and I personally would prefer a signed clasp here as well. After getting used to a milled clasp from other vendors in AliExpress on watches well under 100 US dollars, I think Steel Dive could have given us a better clasp here. And there is no dive extension either, which would be nice on the watch, which declares 200 meters of water resistance. Other than that, as I already mentioned, the clasp is functional and does the job pretty well. So, apart from some small niggles of pressed clasp, to some degree readily bracelet and slight back play on the bezel, I quite like this watch. I will now adjust it to my 7-inch wrist, spend a week or so wearing this watch and I am looking forward to it, and I will report back for the full review. And of course, if you find this content helpful, do smash that like button. And do subscribe, if you haven't done so yet. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.